In this video, we're going to be going over the standard matrix of the rotation transformation. So it turns out that there's a 2 by 2 matrix A, which if you multiply by the vector x in R2, your result will be the, a new vector x prime or x sub rho, rot, which will be the vec original vector x rotated counterclockwise in angle theta. So let's say this is your original vector x. There's a matrix A that if you if you left multiply x by A, you will your resultant will be a rotated x and that'll be x rotated the original x rotated uh, theta counterclockwise In this video we're going to figure out what this what is this particular matrix a well hopefully you remember that this is a uh, this a rotation or any linear transformation the matrix the standard matrix of any linear transformation is given by you know, the first column is going to be what does it do to the E1 basis vector. The second column is going to be given by what it does to the E2 standard basis vector. So we're going to have to look at what this um, so we're going to have to look at what this matrix or what um, what happens to the vector 1 0 so this vector here call this e1 and the vector 0 1 so this is e2 when they're rotated in angle theta when they're each rotated in angle theta counterclockwise so I've taken the vector x out of here and uh, I've replaced it with the vectors e1 prime and e2 prime. e1 prime is just the vector e1 rotated an angle theta counterclockwise, and e2 prime is just the vector e2 rotated an angle theta counterclockwise. So what is e1 prime? What, what, what are the coordinates of e1 prime, or the components, I should say, of e1 prime? Well, we know the x coordinate here, or the x component is cosine theta and the y component here is sine theta so this vector can be represented as cosine theta comma sine theta this is also equivalent to this here cosine theta sine theta so we know then the transformation of e1 the, the the transformed vector e1 t of e1 is equal to cosine theta sine theta so we figured out one of the two columns in the matrix but what about what about this vector here e2 prime and, and, and this is could also be called t of e2 and this here e1 prime can be called putting an equal sign this way t of e1 so what's t of e2 well we know we know e2 starts at an angle of pi over 2 so you rotate theta counterclockwise you get an angle theta plus pi over 2. So we know that T of E2 is going to have to be cosine of theta plus pi over 2, comma, sine of theta plus pi over 2. And that's just because uh, the uh, the coordinates the coordinates of this point or the x coordinate is given by 
cosine of this of this big angle here but this angle here is none other none other than theta plus pi over 2 and the y coordinate is given by sine of this big angle here but that big angle is none other than theta plus pi over 2 so again we have sine of theta plus pi over 2 Hopefully you remember from your sum and difference identities for cosine and sine that these two expressions here can be rewritten. So let's go ahead and rewrite cosine of theta plus pi over 2. Well, that's going to be, if you remember, this is of the form cosine of a plus b, and that's going to be cosine of a. So that's cosine of theta, cosine of b, it's cosine of pi over 2, minus sine of a, so that's sine of theta, sine of b, or times sine of b, sine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this first term drops out. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. This is should be a 2 here. So we get negative sine of theta. But what about sine of theta plus pi over 2? Well, sine of theta plus pi over 2, hopefully you remember that this is the form sine of a plus b. That's going to be sine of a cosine of b plus cosine of a sine of b. So sine of a will be sine of theta. Cosine of b is going to be cosine of pi over 2 plus cosine of a will be plus cosine of theta. Sine of b will be sine of pi over 2. This term here drops out, so we're just left with cosine of theta times 1, which is just cosine of theta. So this means that T of E2, T of E2, we said here it was cosine of theta plus pi over 2, comma sine of theta plus pi over 2. Well, the cosine of theta plus pi over 2 is just negative sine of theta. And sine of theta plus pi over 2 is just cosine of theta. So now we have our, our second column here. So this means that A, which is T of E1, as the first column and T of E2 as the second column is equivalent to the first column is cosine of theta sine theta that's from here second column is minus sine of theta cosine of theta and that's from here so that's the matrix for a rotation of theta counterclockwise. So if you take, if, you, if we want to work an example, let's say, let's say we wanted to rotate a, a vector, a vector x here, you know, any x, say it's here, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Well, 90 degrees counterclockwise, so say, so for 90 degree counterclockwise, I'm just going to abbreviate that double C rotation, A is going to be equal to cosine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, and negative sine of pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2. 
plug in the numbers here, we get 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And just like we found a, a matrix for um, a counterclockwise rotation of theta, we can also find one for a, a clockwise rotation of theta. And again, all we'd consider to do that, all we do is consider what happens to what happens to the standard basis vectors e1 and e2. Where, where where do they end up when you rotate clockwise theta? So let's say you were to rotate, I don't know, theta this way. You look at well, what what happens to where does e1 end up, and then where does uh, e2 end up, and that's basically how you go about doing that.